So, I want each of you to take a moment to think of a business idea that you may have. And I want you to think about how your life would be if you were running that startup. You've got a dream, you've got a vision, all that's left is to turn into reality. Seems pretty simple, right? In fact, I've been like that ever since I was a kid. The first company that I started was my neighbor when we were seven. We called it the Extreme Bacon Pigs Company, and we would sell lemonade at garage sales. Now, don't ask me what the connection between our name and our product was, I wouldn't be able to tell you either. But, you know, things were going great at first, we were able to get sales, but when we started drinking the lemonade ourselves, instead of actually selling it, things started going a little south. So, a few garage sales later, we dissolved, and we went back from business partners to friends, right in the blink of an eye. Hi, my name is Ian Korobinski, and I'm a grade 12 student at Pace. Last summer, I decided to turn passion to purpose by founding Floto, an aerial videography business, and I used drones to film photo catalogs and shoot promotional reels. Initially, I picked up drone photography as a hobby during quarantine, with an excess of time, but I just decided to channel my passion last summer by growing my own business. And when I look at Floto now, I see something that's growing and something that's flourishing, a culmination of hundreds of hours of hard work and unwavering dedication. But if you look at us a year ago, we were nothing. Nothing but a name. No clients, no growth, and no prospects either. Just a name. I didn't have a process to implement our ideas, nor did I have the confidence that I would succeed. All I had was a dream. But instead of giving up, I just took a chance and built my business from scratch, which is what I call the power of zero, building a business from square one. Now, I want to take each and every one of you back to the first day, because I was a student, like most of you here, and I want to start my own business. Except, instead of spending my nights building my startup, I spent my evenings doing my business homework. I dreamt of launching a startup, but the main root problem was I didn't know how. So instead of taking action, I would make excuses, saying that the time was right. But in reality, time's never right. So one day, I saw an advertisement for the Ontario Summer Company Program, a government funding program that gives you grant money to start your own business. And at that moment, even though the same factors were there, the school, the work, all piling up, I stopped making excuses for myself and made the choice to pursue my dreams, which is the first valuable lesson that I learned in my journey as an entrepreneur. Because in reality, there will never be a good time to start a business. You will always have something on your plate. So if you're looking to start your own business too, once you have that opportunity, just go for it. Because first things first, you'll never know if that opportunity comes around again. And the second one is, you've got nothing to lose. So, as I was applying for the program, I had to write a business plan, which since we didn't have ChatGPT at the time, I had to write by hand. But this was a good thing, don't worry, because it actually helped outline my ideas and decide how I was going to run Floto. Now, as I started writing, this is where I hit the first roadblock. I realized that there were many gaps in my ideas. For instance, when deciding how to create my unique value proposition, I had no clue how I was going to stand out from the competition, no clue how I was going to be different than the rest. Moreover, as a high school student with little to none entrepreneurial experience, I had absolutely zero clue if my ideas would work. But this time, instead of giving up and making excuses like I had in the past, I decided to reach out to one of my mentors and ask if she had some time to just hop on a Zoom call and build up these ideas. And I still remember the advice that she gave me, which consisted of two main points. The first, she started by suggesting a crazy out-of-the-box idea to which I responded that I would never, ever work in the real world. And then she told me that that mindset should be my biggest fear. Because by trying to eliminate ideas on the basis that they haven't worked without even just trying them out, just pure thought, you're limiting your dreams and therefore your reality. Just because it hasn't worked for others in the past doesn't mean it won't work for you and vice versa. Just because something has worked for somebody else, that's not a formula for success because you don't know if that will work for you. Next, when figuring out how to stand out from the competition, she told me, Note down what your customer's pain points are. Now, at first I was confused because I didn't know. But then I realized 
the one thing that I could do better than the rest of my competition is offer cheap drone videography services. Because drone videography, believe it or not, is not extremely accessible at all because of the high entry barrier cost. So next, we decided to talk about idea after idea after idea. At which point, she just said stop. Stop listing ideas. You can't do everything all at once. Pick a starting point. Pick where you're going to begin. And after you have that starting point, isolate that clear purpose. Because by tackling too many problems, or trying to offer too many products or services all at once, you're really stretching yourself thin. So focus on offering quality over quantity. Start off by mastering those one or two aspects, and then you can move on to the rest once you've already established these. So now, instead of spending my evenings with my business homework and calculating all the transformational potential energy and kinetic energy as that roller coaster descends down a hill, I was slowly turning my dreams into reality by typing out my business plan in the late hours of the night. But after submitting my application, I was given an interview a few days later, which I ended up successfully passing, and then I got my offer with two weeks to respond. Now, although I dreamed of this moment, I wanted this, but I didn't accept until the last few months. And here's why, because I couldn't bring myself to take that chance to say yes because I was afraid. What if I had failed? What if my idea failed? Instead, I could have gotten a job as a camp counselor over the summer working with the kids and had a great time. We even worked on a few side projects for my portfolio, and it would have been a blast, and moreover, there would have been no risk involved. But then I realized that of course, with all things in life, there is risk. Every day, you take risks. And because if you never try, you're never going to find out. And by doing your best to turn your ideas into successes, you're doing everything you can. The rest is out of your control, so just go for it. Which is why I decided not to worry about it and join the Ontario Summer Company program. Now, unfortunately, I was right. As an entrepreneur, you will fail a lot, more than you can possibly imagine. Your journey will never be easy starting from day one. There will be roadblocks that you won't be able to overcome, that you'll have to try again and again and again and propose alternative solutions until one of them finally works. I discovered this the hard way when I was trying to market Flodo and attract new customers. I tried countless methods of marketing, developing a website, advertising my business on LinkedIn, putting up posters around my neighborhood, spreading news through words of mouth through friends and family, and posting promotions on my social media account. None of this had helped attract new clients, and I had absolutely no idea what to do next. Now, to be honest, I think that if I was only in it for the money, that's the moment when I would have quit. Which is why if you're going to start something, make sure you truly believe in it, and that's truly what you want to do. Your heart has to be in it. And my heart was. So at that moment, I asked another mentor of mine, a director and C-suite executive of a film production company to just go on another Zoom call and help me out. So, once again, I told him that I had absolutely no idea what I was doing wrong. To which then he asked me, what's the way you can reach the greatest number of potential customers? Because I was just struggling with it, right? And naturally, at first, you know, I was like, I don't know. But as I thought about it, I realized, in reality, I wasn't using the internet properly. I was trying to advertise on entertainment platforms like Instagram, where you go to send your friends funny videos, whereas in reality, I should have been targeting the marketplaces, the people where people go buy and sell, and that's where I could start building up my reputation. So once I put up postings on Kijiji and Craigslist, he told me to give it a few weeks, so I took on a couple of pro bono projects in the meantime, and started building it up my portfolio. Now, this is the part of the story where I tell you it's all worth it. All those sleepless nights wondering if you'll ever succeed and all that self-doubt building up in your mind. Because some of those best memories from my last summer were from these pro bono crowd projects and I want to tell you about a few of these. So, at the start of summer, I traveled to Salt Lake City in Utah with a couple of my friends for an executive leadership conference. And one of my friends was so incredibly adamant on seeing the sunrise in the morning. So, we would wake up and we would go and trek up a hill for an hour after waking up at 5 a.m., which, you know, wasn't easy considering we were running on about two hours of sleep. Now, we'd get out of bed and truck up the mountain just to see the sunrise. You know, we tried to get the electric scooters that were offered around the city, but between the three of us, we couldn't figure it out. So, walking it was. And actually, up here, here's a photo of us lying on the ground that first
glorious morning when we saw the sunrise. Now, as you can see, we were exhausted, and I was what, what seems like what, like hanging out with friends, but it was also a way to develop my business, because through this expedition, through these experiences, I built up over half of my landscape portfolio, which I used in the end to promote my business. Now, here's the next part of the story. A couple of weeks later, one of the friends of mine invited me up to their cottage up north. Now, we spend the weekend doing normal cottage stuff. You know, swimming, boating on the lake, roasting marshmallows by the campfire. And in the end, I actually offered to create a photo catalog of their property for free, practicing my skills, and once again, building up my portfolio. Now, once again, I was having the time of my life. It was incredible. Yet, I was also progressing my business because I was struggling with my real estate portfolio, not having many properties. And this is what helped build up. And finally, in the middle of the summer, I traveled up north to a little town called Saddle Beach. Now, this time, instead of catching sunrises while sleepless and attending conferences, I slept in, slapped, flashed in the waves, and took enough drone photos and watched enough sunsets to last me a lifetime. Now, as you can see, I was having the most fun I'd ever had. And yet I was still building my business. Now, if that sounds like a job that you'd like to have, then go out there, build your business. Now, remember, it comes with its fair shares of late nights and roadblocks, but if you're up for it, you will have the time of your life. Now, just like that, a few pro bono projects later, the listings on the marketplace did not work, and one day, I got a call from an unknown number, which I would have been, if I had declined them, then wouldn't have been too good for me, because that was, in fact, my first customer. And from there, the rest is history. Now, I want to leave you today with a couple of final thoughts. Entrepreneurship is a lot of things, especially as a student. It's a way to turn your dreams into reality. It's a place where you can creatively solve problems. And finally, it's a way to have a lot of fun while working. But it's also not a lot of things, and it's not for everyone. It's not a way to get rich fast. It's not a place where you can let fear stop you. And most importantly, it's not an easy path to success. Now, it might be for you, or it might not be. And that's totally okay. Because at the end of the day, if you have an idea for a business you'd like to build, then go out, build that business from nothing. Use the power of zero to build your business from square one. Take the chance and become one of the first few high school entrepreneurs out there by making your dreams your legs. It all starts with an idea, but the rest is up to you. Thank you, everyone.